Dad. Hey, buddy. Could you read me a story? Oh, um, football. That's okay. I can freeze time. Whoa. Introducing the Direct TV Plus DVR. Good game. Finally, an easy-to-use DVR that gives you the power to pause and rewind live TV. So you'll never miss a second of what's important to you. <laughs> Somebody up there loves you. Direct TV. Margaret, we got emails, we got phone calls. I got stopped in the street. People are like, every time I see this commercial, I think of mental engineering. <laughs> what caught your eye about it? The catch line, somebody out there loves you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're setting up the set of associations between TV, love, daddy, and God, which I find personally really disturbing. Right? So the superficial kind of moral of the story is that we need to make time for the things that are important to us, our children. But clearly, this gentleman in the ad, football is really important to him. That is, in fact, why he bought his direct TV, so that you know, he wouldn't have to miss a moment of the football because of his pesky little child wanted him to read a book. And the child seemed to pick up on that, right? Non-verbally, oh. the kid looked up at the TV and went, football's on. And you could just see it. Oh, daddy ignores the child during football. And I noticed they never got around to reading the story. They just yeah. played with the TV. Yeah. Video games versus stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought, I thought um, the, the father was presented with the choice of doing two things that would be really constructive and nice. One would be to, <laughs> to read a story to the kid. Mm -hmm. The other, which is something I remember, for, you know, that my dad did is, you know, there's a tackle in the garden, and so, you know, explaining what <laughs> football is, and I think nobody has a problem with, you know, people watching a father and a son watching sports together, but instead he turned this into the, like this parlor trick, which kind of reminds me of like when, you know, uh, an explorer is being attacked by headhunters and he takes out a cigarette lighter. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that's, that's a really exciting. odd relationship to have with your kids. So you know, like I, I agree with you. The the what they were appealing to are these really warm, fuzzy you know, fuzzy values. values yeah. But it's a very dark, ugly <laughs> situation that they actually uh, portrayed. So I agree, it doesn't rise to the height of family interaction. But we do have a TV commercial showing a positive father-son relationship with a black family. I think yeah. that deserves to be noted. And, you know, the influence of fathers on children is very strong. You have fathers really helping to socialize their kids. And I was trying to look for the silver lining. I was yeah. a little bit appalled by the dad, and I kept thinking, what's good about this? I like the positive interaction that's happening between them. And I thought, this dad probably is socializing his son well, even though I wish he were reading or I wish they were doing something more constructive. You know, who's to say video games aren't constructed? <laughs> but he also deceives his child because he's in the left hand, kind of hitting along his hip, oh, he's pushing the button and he's on. saying it's right. magic. And I, I don't know what's the mess. You know, what's the message of that? Well, it's 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 the message of Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I've got your nose. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's where the God comes in again, right? You know the God trick. There you know, <laughs> Daddy love TV. Yeah, you know, God. So, <laughs> yeah, so I, I mean, I do believe TV probably plays too great a role in fathering our children these days. TV has become a sort of God. But it won its position by default, right? It was yeah. because nobody else was in there doing the job that it's been able to pick up the slack. And there was social research on that in like 1948 that its primary function is to be a babysitter. It occupies children and it frees up parents. And there's just economic, not economics in the sense of dollars, but economics in the sense of units of time. People are busy, and it's just an easy, it's a shortcut. Yeah. yeah, there was also research that suggested that it became a new sort of forum for family interaction, a new kind of, you know, focus of attention around which family dynamics would emerge. So maybe we're misreading this. Maybe, maybe well, we're they, seeing... They talk about that as, as society-making media, but that was in the three-channel universe, universe. But now with 500 channels, yeah. it's segment-making media. And, you know, people, used to be two, three people are on a TV. Now it's usually just one. So yeah, the actually, living room that's not correct. Isn't that's it? That's not correct. No. Well, now you're going back to like <laughs> mini TVs or huge TVs. The huge TVs, you always have more than one person that's around, and mini TVs. I get um, the biggest TV I've ever seen. <laughs> I watch it by myself most of the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know our, our TV habit, watching habits are really changing drastically, and you know, obviously. They're totally savvy mm -hmm. about this in Hollywood, right? It, it's at this moment of really catastrophic shift. Um, and, and I think this ad kind of registers that in a way, that, yeah. that t we're interacting with TV in a different way. TV used to provide, 
outside of the thing, you know, the babysitter and all that, it used to be sort of a campfire, and it mm -hmm, used to be something mm -hmm. that gave the country shared experiences. The thing with the, you know, the first one is... The town hall. The town hall, or, or like the, you know, the, the day after the Beatles were on the Ed Sullivan show, it's mm -hmm. all anybody talked about, because, you know, 65% of the country, some crazy percentage of the country it's actually the saw that. So this commercial sort of seems aware of that. At the same time, it kind of <laughs> squanders it by turning it into this parlor trick. He's got, he's got the power to freeze time. So our exit question is, what would you pause if you could? Margaret. That moment just before the president takes the country to war. <laughs> Kim? Uh, arguments. Sometimes they need an instant replay. Ah, Sam? Aging. That's what you would all really do. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Growing old. Yeah. <laughs> or financial panic.